Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football. We've done it! Champions League football is secure, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, get in there, get in there. Ah, oh, it's like flashbacks to 2003 with Gronka and, and, and scoring that winner against Liverpool. Um, it's just, it, obviously the stakes are not as high. Back then we were all about the survival of the football club. We would have gone bust if we didn't win that game, but... We've secured Champions League football. Top four is in the bag. How it's finished, we got fourth. Man United actually beat Leicester 2-0. That's done and dusted for them. So they will be qualifying for the Champions League with us. They finished third on goal difference. They scored a lot more goals. Well, actually not scored a lot more goals. They've conceded a lot less, I think it is. Uh, you know, our defending's been atrocious. So... We, we don't care. We got fourth. Fantastic. We're happy. Happy days. And Leicester will be playing Europa League football next season. I think that's fair. I mean, Brendan Rodgers has bottled it. But it's unfortunate. And I think the level of their team is Europa League level. Um, some would say the same for us. And some would say the same for Man United. But the truth is, we've managed to persevere, see ourselves through. We've been in the top four for the majority of the season. It's only deserved that I think we, we play Champions League football. And um, today, we absolutely nailed it. 2-0 win over Wolves. But my goodness, a tale of two halves. The two halves were like two contrasting games. Two complete different games. The first half was atrocious. I think we can all agree, except for the last five minutes. And then the second half was a lot better and a lot more in control and a lot more dominant. Um, but I did say yesterday in the preview, I don't care how we do it. I just want us to do it. And we done it. In hindsight, when you look at all of this, this has been... A fantastic season so far so far and it can get better if we win the FA Cup final next week a piece of silverware you never know I'm gonna get to all of that near the end of the video let's dig into the the game against Wolves and go into a little bit of detail we started off the game with no Kepa no Kepa he was dropped and I think you know I speak for most when I say that was a good decision. Um, and based on the performance today, we saw a couple of occasions where Caballero came to the rescue. And I think it's safe to say, if Kepa was in goal, there'd be a higher chance that those would have actually hit the net. I'm just saying there. But Caballero was top class today, top draw. In all honesty, he didn't have too much to work with, especially the second half. Second half, he's pretty much having a cup of tea, a packet of crisps and, and you know, put the kettle on for the next one because he didn't really do much. <laughs> but the first half, um, fantastic. Especially that ball that came across. Um, I don't know if it was Jimenez or if it was Jota that hit the shot or it was a cross, but it was going in and, and Caballero managed to get back just in time to tip it over for a corner. Fantastic save. You know, if it was Kepa, you never know. You never know. Um, we started with a back three, as predicted yesterday. I did say I think we would counter what Wolves are going to set up with. Wolves set up with a 3-4-3. Three, three. We're going to probably do the same. Um, and that's exactly what we've done. We set up with the same back three. Aspilicueta, Zuma and Rudiger. I do want to say um, overall... Solid. Second half, much solid. First half was dodgy, but second half, a lot more solid. However, out of the three names I just mentioned, I need to give credit to one. And I think you know who I'm about to say. Kurt Flipping Zuma. What a performance. Absolute class. Class. That was that was sublime. That was absolutely sublime. Um, put his body on the line. He did, you know... He went back to basics, and I think that's what we needed to do. You know, you go back to basics. If you're in doubt, kick it out. You know, the sort of things you hear in grassroots football, football 101. You know, those sort of things. He was just there to just clear the ball away. He wasn't looking to pass to the right person. He's just, get rid, get rid, mate, get rid. And he done just that. As I said, put his body on the line, got into some crunch tackles, really physical, very dominant, fantastic overall performance from Kurt Zoom. I'm very, very, very happy with him. We had Reese James and Marcos Alonso as the wing backs. Wolves initially set up to nullify our wings and they were doing a really good job at that in the first half. It was only up until the goal where, you know, that was the case. After the first goal and then into the second half, Wolves had to open up and they had to come at us and, you know, that allowed us to play a little bit more on the flanks. But initially... Wolves nullified us completely. Alonso and Reese James looked very quiet. Nowhere to go. It was just orange walls that they kept hitting. Couldn't even reach the box. Um, so, first half, as I said, 
there's not much that they really could have done. It was a complete tactical thing, and I'm just glad we got the first goal through Mason Mount, and that opened things up, and that allowed both of them to get more into the game. When they did get into the game, Marcos Lonso was very good going forward. There was one occasion in the game where he won a duel against Adama Traore. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I saw Traore come on, and I thought, well, this, this is a wrap. It's a wrap. We're going to concede. Um, he sprints at 200 mile an hour. Alonso doesn't stand a chance. But we were attacking, and Alonso had the ball, and Traore tried to get it off him, and Alonso was muscling him off the ball. Traore, the mountain. I'm thinking, Alonso, go on, lad. Didn't know you had it in here. So, um, yeah, Alonso, fair play. Well done, well done, man. I'm, I'm proud of you for that. Um, <laughs> I didn't think he had it in him. Reese James on the other side, a good performance. First half, first 25, 30 minutes, you could tell he was nervous. You could tell he looked a little bit shaky. But when he got into his game, he was combining really well, making the correct overlapping runs, crossing the ball into the box as he does. And he done a, he done an overall good job. Um, the midfield. Jorginho Kovacic. Kante, unfortunately, was missing again. But... As, as afraid as I was before the game that we needed Kante, it's nice to see that initially, after seeing this game, we didn't. So it's all good. <laughs> you know, Jorginho um, didn't have that much space to play his game in the first half. But when Wolves had to open up and come at us, it was the perfect scenario for Jorginho to start playing his football. And he was doing just that. He looked a lot more comfortable. Um, and he started combining some really good passes. Doing his thing. What Jorginho does. And that, you know, I'm really happy with the way that he ended his game today. Kovacic. I honestly would give Kovacic man of the match. But there's one other guy we have to talk about. And I'm going to come to him shortly. But Kovacic was just sublime. Offensively and defensively. He'd, he'd, he'd do everything dribbling, going forward, creating space, creating chances, setting up, passing combinations, the whole lot. He'd done it all. And then defensively, he would. there was one time, where was it? I don't know who lost the ball, but then Kovacic out of nowhere... You know, he just he just ran, I don't know, like 40 yards to go and retrieve the ball back. And he won the ball back and then came back to start attacking. Oh, just the work rate is absolutely sublime. Kovacic today had a fantastic day, a fantastic game. And it's just summed up his season. He honestly should be player of the season. As far as I'm concerned, I think he is our player, our player of the season. I'm not saying the player of the season for all teams, no. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, that's going to someone in Liverpool. But well, it should be Kevin De Bruyne, if we're honest. But anyway, that's a different story for a different day. For us, Chelsea player of the season, I, I would have to give it to Kovacic. And today kind of cemented exactly why. Just a fantastic overall performance. Done it all. he done it all. So Kovacic, well done, mate. Very proud of you too. Now, we come to the front three. We started off with Christian Pulisic, Mason Mount and Olivier Giroud. Christian Pulisic today had a nightmare. Let's be honest. And it goes to show the problem that Frank Lampard does have at Chelsea. When you see players that you just think, this guy is amazing, he has to start, he has to play, there's always the risk he'll have an off day. There's always the risk that he just won't play well. And today was one of those examples. Pulisic was not at the races today. But that doesn't mean drop him. And that doesn't mean, oh, he's rubbish, he's not up to it, you know, that's it, he's going to be on the bench from now on. No. Frank Lampard needs to find his eleven. And stick with it. Even if you do see some performances on a day where it's not up to par. You have to stick with it. Because if not you'll be chopping and changing way too much. You won't get any stability in the side. And I think that just shows the difficulty of Frank Lampard's job. Because we've seen it from pretty much every single player in the squad. Everyone's been up and down like a roller coaster. Everyone. Maybe, you know, Kovacic, you could say, hasn't. Um, as even as Pelicueta has been up and down, if you're being completely honest, it's it's difficult. It's really difficult. So when you're seeing a, a player like Pulisic and the ability that we know he has, having an off day, it can happen. It can happen. Um, but that's been the problem at Chelsea this season. It's the consistency. We've seen those up and downs from everyone, and that does need to kind of stop. It's okay to have an off day. It's it's normal. It's human nature. You're allowed to have a bad game. That's just the way the world works. But um, you don't want to be up and down too much. You start. You need to find a level of consistency. So um, that's just a, a, an, an overall point. Just based on Pulisic's Six performance today. Um, I'm still expecting him to start the FA Cup final. And I'm still expecting him to start against Bayern Munich. So we'll see what happens there. Mason Mount. 
again, you see, this is the problem. I would give man of the match to Kovacic, but Mason Mount happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mason Mount, here's the thing. He scored a sublime free kick today, and that calmed everyone's nerves. Everyone calmed down after that. It was exactly what we needed on the brink of halftime. The thing with Mason Mount, there are people that say Mason Mount is rubbish. Uh, he can't play. Does know what he's doing, right? I, I genuinely don't believe that now. You know, I did have initial um, thoughts of that at the beginning of the season. You know, is he ready? He's just come out of the academy. Uh, you know, he had a really good start to the season and then he, and then he dipped. Um, and that's when I started to get a bit worried. Is he really up to scratch? Is he ready? Wasn't so sure. Today's performance kind of cements exactly um, what I think is the case with Mason Mount. When there's a big occasion or when nerves kick in, he hasn't got enough experience to have dealt with that just yet. You know, when you're in a situation, panic happens. Um, I think more experience will allow him to control his emotions better. But the moment he scored that free kick, right? Because prior to that, he was making a few mistakes. He was losing possession. He was looking a little bit weak. He was looking a little bit timid. He scored the free kick, brilliant free kick. There's a clip of him years ago in the academy it's on the Chelsea on Chelsea Twitter and social media but years ago he scored a free kick and it's kind of all come full circle because his free kick started the process today of us getting top four so it's really really nice but after scoring that free kick he came out his shell the confidence came the nerves went away and the way you saw him control the ball move into space his positioning got better his combinations were better he was starting to look a bit more brave he was starting to be a bit more assertive it shows he has it in him. It shows he is a good player. He just needs to manage his emotions better. And that comes with experience. That comes with time. So I think Mason Mount into next season is going to be on a different level, positively. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think Lampard knows what he's doing with him. And I look forward to seeing what player Mason Mount's going to turn into. I'm really proud of him. And um, his free kick was the start of something beautiful today. So thank you, Mason. Olivier Giroud. This is the flip side of Mason Mount. So we have Mason Mount, youth product, um, is is coming into you know into his game, is starting his life at Chelsea as a senior, and he's doing bits for Frank Lampard when he needs to. Giroud about to finish his career, has done it all, <laughs> World Cup winner, right? We all thought it was finished. We all thought he was he was done. He was over. He was leaving in January, and then the top professional he is when he's called upon and he's required to score goals. Since the restart, that's exactly what he's done. And Olivier Giroud today was different gravy. And the second goal was exactly that. The work rate that he put in to score that second goal shows you exactly why he's deserving of a starting position at the moment before Timo Werner next season possibly takes up that role. And it shows you why he is scoring goals. I think he's got like seven out of the last eight starting appearances or something ridiculous. At his age, 33 years old. Fantastic, Olivier Giroud. And those are the reasons why... We won 2-0 today and we nailed top four. The second half, we managed to see us really just blend into our flavour. We saw us get a lot more confident. We saw us play with a lot more flair. The nerves came down. It's as simple as that. There's a mentality issue at Chelsea, which I think is starting to get better. We've seen it under previous managers where we just bottle things. And now I think with Lampard and this game where it mattered the most and we got the job done, it shows you we, I think we are making positive progress. And into next season, I can't wait for new signings to show up and for all this to combine to take what we've learned this year, put it into next year and see what we can do. Can we challenge for the title? We'll have to wait and see. But it's definitely looking like it's heading in that direction. And I'm very happy with the lads. Um, I do want to say overall, to end this video, because it's the end of the Premier League season. Firstly, Pedro, thank you so much. I think we saw the last appearance of Pedro in a Chelsea shirt today. He won't be playing the FA Cup final and he won't be playing the Champions League game. I think it's safe to say, unless we get injuries left, right and centre. Um, but he came on for the last, what, five, ten minutes. And um, very nice of Lamps for him to allow that to happen. Um, so, yeah, Pedro, thank you so much and good luck. You've been a great servant. We appreciate it. Overall, in hindsight, when you look at this season, I said it yesterday on Louis Benevente's stream. So if you haven't um, subscribed to Louis Benevente, go and head over to his channel. Um, but I said, when you look at this season in hindsight, it's been a very good season, right? We, we finished in the top four, which is something at the beginning of the season none of us expected. We are in an FA Cup final, which judging by the performance Watford have put in today, even though they've lost, um, 
we should be beating Arsenal in the FA Cup final. We really should. So I'm hoping that's a piece of silverware coming our way. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So considering that we've got a performance against Bayern Munich to, to end it all. Just, just throw everything at them and you never know. Miracles can happen in football. But overall, when you look at that, it's been a very good season. Considering Eden Hazard has left Frank Lampard's first season as manager in the Premier League. Having to work with a fairly mediocre squad when you look at the levels. Introducing academy players. All of that combined into one. We still finished in the top four. Um, and find ourselves about to win a trophy possibly. Amazing. Yes, other teams around us have flopped. <laughs> big time. But, you know, it could be a lot worse. There, there was predictions of 7th, 8th at the beginning of the season. And we've got ourselves 4th. So, I think it's safe to say we're all very proud. Frank... You've done an, an amazing job so far. Please keep it up. We're looking forward to the signings coming in. We're looking forward to next week. Let's take it on and beat Arsenal. Come on. And um, yeah, top four is secure. We're playing Champions League football next year. Can't wait. That should as well get Havertz over the line. So I'm expecting his announcement to come out as soon as we finish playing Bayern Munich, I reckon. So we'll see what happens. But there we are. As I said, Champions League football secured. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Let's try and get this to 5,000 likes. We got close yesterday. I think it's about, about three and a half, nearly four. So we'll keep working. We'll, it's, it, it's, it's a process, <laughs> you know. 5,000. Let's try and get it today. Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out my social media links in the description. And I'll see you very soon, tomorrow possibly, or the day after, but I reckon tomorrow we'll get you some more transfer news and some more news around Chelsea and see what's popping. I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching, guys. Look after yourselves. Take care and peace.